Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another edition of the Freemason Podcast. If I look like I'm dying, it's because I just finished a five-day fast and a lot of gallstones came out. But you know what? Olivia's bringing the energy here, so I feel good already. <laughs> this is Olivia Budgen, another awesome raw vegan YouTuber. The saga continues. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Olivia? Hi, Josh. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to chat with you. Yes, definitely. You are in yeah. Australia, if the viewers weren't able to tell from your accent. Yes, Brisbane, Australia, and Queensland. Brisbane. Okay, very cool. So why don't you tell the audience what it is that you do and what you're about? That's a pretty loaded question. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, sure. Um, well, I'll just give a bit of a, a backstory for everyone so that they know um, how I got into, into the health and wellness field, I guess. Mm -hmm. So my journey into health and wellness, or my awakening journey as I like to call it, started about seven years ago uh, when I was diagnosed with a multitude of different uh, health conditions. Uh, but just to give a quick backstory, so just to let people know how I got to that point. So I led a bit of a party girl lifestyle for a few years. So. Um, during high school, I sort of did the typical uh, binge drinking uh, every weekend, every second weekend. Uh, I'd hit up the parties and, yeah, I was called the, uh, the vodka girl. I was this little blonde, four foot, I'm not even five foot, I'm four foot eleven little girl. And um, you'd always see me with this one litre bottle of the good stuff, the, the vodka Smirnoff. Uh, and I'd typically drink like half a litre to maybe a litre of that per night. A litre? Yeah, Holy up to a litre. <laughs> so I hit it pretty hard during high school, my poor little body. And then after high school, I got into a romantic relationship with a man who introduced me to the lifestyle of recreational drugs. So I hit that pretty hard for a few years. And... Yeah, eventually I got the courage to get out of that toxic relationship and I just suddenly stopped the party lifestyle and it was just like my body was almost just like, oh my gosh, she's, she's finally stopped and it just completely collapsed and one day I woke up and I was bedridden, couldn't get out of bed. Um, so I was diagnosed with um, things like systemic candida, chronic fatigue, uh, I was severely anemic, had chronic digestive issues. So by that time, I was pooping once every two weeks, which is, it's crazy. <laughs> and I was also diagnosed with depression as well. And I now realize that the constipation had a big, big role in that, for sure. Uh, yeah, so basically diagnosed with all of those things and my parents took me through the uh, medical industry. So I saw many, many doctors um, and specialists who unfortunately couldn't help me. And then they took me to naturopaths and holistic doctors and I couldn't get the help that I needed from there. Um, I basically just ended up with people just wanting to give me a whole lot of laxatives and antidepressants. Um, and it wasn't until my parents suggested that I go on antidepressants because I was just so depressed all the time uh, that that was when the light bulb switch went off for me. And I thought, wow, I don't want to be someone who has to um, take pills to determine my happiness. And I realized that no one was going to helped me to get better at that point. I had to take responsibility for my health. So that's what I started to do. And I thought there must be a better way than to just take pills and pharmaceutical drugs to heal myself. So I was in bed, bedridden, and I just got my computer out, good old Dr. Google, and I just started researching um, how to heal yourself naturally. And 
yeah, when you start getting into all of your own research with that, it can feel a little overwhelming with all the conflicting research. But um, one thing that I could see and understand clearly, a lot of people kept saying the same thing, was that our body is a self-healing mechanism. And if you provide it with the right environment um, and the right nutrition and all that sort of stuff, it can actually heal itself. So that made sense to me. And... I started to make small changes uh, straight away. So I started to cut out processed food, uh, I cut out the dairy, the gluten, um, the junk food, and then I eventually cut out meat as well. So cutting out all animal products is what worked for me. And my symptoms just slowly started to improve. Uh, I was able to get out of bed in the morning and yeah, it was just really exciting to know that, to realize that we can be our own healers. And that's what I love to do today. Um, throughout my journey, I now want to become someone who can help people to have that revelation that we can be our own healers and we can heal ourselves naturally and we don't need to go down um, the pharmaceutical and medical industry uh, to do that in most cases. Um, and yeah, I'm just super passionate about a raw, vegan, plant-based lifestyle. The living foods is what works for me. And so I mostly help people to incorporate uh, more of those living foods into their life to uh, help heal themselves. Wow. When you went to the naturopaths and did you go to like functional medicine doctors, what would they try mm -hmm. to do for you and how come they couldn't help you? I had the same experience, by the way. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, yeah, it's super disheartening because um, they were sort of like the last sort of people that I was trying to get to hold me. Um, oh, I went to so many and it's crazy how so many of them came up with so many different things to do with me. Like it was just so overwhelming. Um, a lot of them said I had like the... the the brain waves inside my brain weren't functioning properly, so they were trying to put me on different supplements for my brains to do with the depression and the fatigue and brain fog and all that sort of stuff. Um, just a lot of them put me on so many different type of diets to try and um, help myself heal, especially with the severe anemia. Um, a lot of them were like, and weight loss as well, because I was very, very, very thin back then. Um, they were like, you have to eat more, you have to eat tons of meat to get your iron levels up. Um, but with my severe digestive constipation and issues, um, the tons of meat and, and animal products and eating so much, like they were like, you have to eat six to seven times a day like to help put on the weight and get the nutrition in. Um, but it just didn't feel good to me and, and it made my digestive system worse. Um, and slowly over time, I just realized that our bodies actually do speak to us and send us signs. And it takes courage, but I eventually learned to just listen to my own body. And that's when I learned about the art of detoxification and that I realized I was struggling with severe malabsorption issues. And that was the reason um, that I had a lot of those symptoms. So when I started to clean up my body and clean up my gut, uh, I was able to actually start absorbing nutrients properly um, and without even trying really um, with the food I was eating, my iron levels just soared um, after I cleaned up my gut. Wow. Did you do a lot of like colonics? And I imagine if you're going once every two weeks, pretty much every month you have like 14 bowel movements that you're missing out on, you know, or like 15 that are basically uh, staying sorry. in there, you know, like. That shit doesn't go anywhere, right? Where like, does it go? People... Literally, where does it? It just like, like it just like go finds its way into the intestinal wall, like somehow, like I don't even know it's, how it's possible, you know? It's so scary, and like I had this intuitive feeling that it wasn't right that I was not going after each time I was eating, and all the doctors and even some of the holistic practitioners were like, "It's okay. Everyone's, di everyone's <laughs> different. It's all right." And I was just like. No, that shit ain't right. Yeah. Um, and then when I started to eventually go regularly and started to realize the truth, um, 
yeah, you're totally right. We, it's just not normal. But, yeah, colonics and enemas played and still do play a massive, massive role in the healing journey. Um, it actually took about six to seven colonics for anything to actually come out of me. Wow. So the first, let's say the first five, and, and this is a really awesome point for people out there. I've seen comments on my channel like, hey, Josh, you're full of shit. I've done three colonics and nothing came out. You know, so, so what you're saying is that you did five colonics. And if you stopped after those five, it would have been like, you would have been like, okay, I guess there's just nothing there. But around your sixth or your seventh. I guess seventh, I'm just clean. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Right. And then your sixth or seventh yeah. one, the flow starts. And then it probably took weeks or even months after that to like, keep getting all of the old stuff out. What, what I found is like that the old stuff comes out in relation to our emotional healing, you know, like as you start feeling a little better, your stress levels go down, you have more joy and then you, something loosens in your intestines and it like allows you to go deeper. The next colonic could even go deeper, you know, and when we're tight and we're tense, you can do a hundred colonics and nothing's going to come out. So, so that's it, it. Please elaborate on that if you will. Yeah. Yeah. Totally right. It's just, as you said before, like that shit doesn't go anywhere in the layers. They keep building up, they keep building up. And I found, yes, especially for myself, um, the more clinics I did, the deeper it went and the more stuff came out. Um, but yeah, after the six or seven clinic, it was like a flip switched and the flow started. And I was just lucky that my I had a good relationship with my colonizer therapist and she was like, no, just please hang in here. So I was like, I don't want to do this anymore. It's, it's not working, like nothing's coming out. Um, and I still remember on the third of the clinic, um, oh, my God, I had so much pain and, yeah. I, and I knew it was coming. Mm -hmm. And it just, it just started coming and we had this big celebration while I was on the bed. And wow. the stuff that came out was of me was just incredible and then every point after that um there's always been heaps of stuff that's that's come out of me um and you're right emotional plays such a big part of it as well um because it just relaxes your entire intestinal tract when you are when you do start to heal emotion on an emotional level as well um and yeah really freaky stuff starts to come out as well i think um, especially that's when you start seeing the parasites and mm -hmm. stones and that sort of stuff come out of you as well. So yeah, I just have to say to people, don't give up with the clinics. If nothing's coming out of you, it does not mean you're clean. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, it just means usually that you've got uh, some deeper work to do. Um, and I find definitely that doing enemas in between the clinics as well, if you're struggling to release during the clinics, um, can definitely help. That helped. Uh, my intestinal tract to loosen up as well. Did you have a mucoid plaque at that point? Was that like coming out? Yeah, so I've, I've never had like a, like, you know, those pictures that you see yeah. of the huge long mucoid plaque come out, um, but I've definitely had big chunks of the mucoid plaque yeah. come out during my clonics. Um, mostly during my enemas after like I've done a fast of some type and, and um, taking some herbs, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, usually, like what you were just saying about your gallstones um, coming out after you broke the fast, the mucoid plaque seems to come out after I've broken the fast. Yeah. Yeah. There's something about um, the food relaxing the nervous system, and then all of a sudden it's like, because during the fast, I feel, for me at least, there's the, there, it's a grind, you know, like there's there's something grinding during the fast. Like, I'm not really at ease, you know, like I could have joy and I can have like positive thoughts and, and like, like energy, but I'm definitely mm -hmm. grinding on something, you know, like, like I can't, like, do... shit's happening. Like yeah. It's just, yeah, you're just moving through your emotions and like, gr for me, I just start grinding on like life, I guess, you know, because, because mm -hmm. you're burning, you're literally just burning pain. You're burning all of your junk. In that process, and the acids are being stirred up. And, yeah, yeah, and sort of like afterwards, your body can kind of that oh, part sort of yeah. over, and it can relax, and it's like okay, release. yes, release the stones. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I think as well, bringing back the food, probably the fiber sort of scrapes whatever's like being loosened up, and just sort of helps that mm -hmm. helps that to release for sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
Wow, that is super awesome. I love that story. I love I yeah. like, Thank you. <laughs> wow. And just um yeah, I guess the biggest revelation for me was you always read about that gut brain connection, you know? <laughs> um but yeah, I discovered there's like a big difference between you know, reading something and knowing something and, and sort of understanding it, but then having that Understanding it from like a personal experience just makes it so much more of a massive revelation. And you know, when I was suffering de from depression, and then I finally started to detox and clean up my gut and get that moving um, without having to really do anything else, that depression and that fog and, and that just started to lift. And it was like, wow, that gut brain connection is mm -hmm. is is so real and personally you know there's so many people out there suffering from anxiety and depression and, and mental disorders and it breaks my heart and i think a big part of that is people's guts are just so compromised you know yeah it, it makes me think about what a miracle it is that like seeing how much work i've done and how much has come out of me you know i've been like pretty in pretty decent shape my whole life, athletic, like obviously I ate a bunch of foods, but I never really let my health go, you know, and seeing what's come out of me makes me think, wow, how is it that some, it's a miracle that some of these people are even alive. Like people mm -hmm. who are eating fast food, drinking soda, sitting sedentary all day, like it's, it's genuinely a miracle that they're still on this planet because whatever's happening in their ocean, like I, I feel like these, this, these intestinal, tract is just like one big ocean like this microorganism colony like like a big house of just like all like it, literally all different types of fish and bacteria and like imagine an ocean you know and like and people's oceans are literally like this filled with shit like they're they're just loaded with shit and parasites and like bad bacteria well, they call it the, the river of life or the river of death don't they yes it's literally it's exactly it's literally what it what is, it is. <laughs> Yeah. So to see those people, like, it just makes me realize, wow, God or the universe, like, really does give us so many chances to, to make it. You know, the fact that those bodies are still walking around, they're still able to think and hold the job. I, it's, it just, it's a miracle to me, really. It shows us really how powerful we are. Yeah. Know? And our body is always working to try and keep us alive and keep us happy and keep us healthy. And yeah, you know, and it's yeah, it's sad, but at the same time, it's like it's why I'm so much about self love as well. Like, just your body is constantly trying to love you and keep you well and keep you healthy. And it's like when you learn to give that love back to your body, your life changes in so many beautiful ways. And that's what I learned as well. Like, um, what you eat and how you treat yourself and the way that you live, literally, like. You know what you eat is like creates a ripple effect into every other part of your life you know because it's all interconnected everything is one um so i love to try and inspire people in that regard as well is that it doesn't just affect you physically but it affects you emotionally and spiritually and literally gives you an awakening you know um it helps you to start seeing the truths in life and the truth of who we really are and what we're really doing in here in this world and it really helped to awaken me to my purpose yep. on earth as well so yeah it's just such a bigger picture behind it all um yeah here's a question that'll get people thinking it just popped up for me what would you rather have would you rather have a salad like a, your best most healthy most amazing salad that you love making in prison like with miserable people around you and you feel very 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 depressed and like isolated and, and like sitting on the concrete or would you rather be in a paradise with your best friends eating like a, a, a full gluten full cheese pizza <laughs> the second one the, the pizza and I, i'm all i'm all, okay okay but I, I guess i shouldn't say what would you rather have what i should say is what do you think you'd digest better
taking in life, to, you're talking about the environment that we're in as well. Right? Yeah, because what you said made me realize, like, it is all interconnected. It's not only about the food. It's about our relationship to the food, the mood we're in, how we bless the food, you know, all of that yeah, is connected. that's why I immediately said the second one, because okay. as you were describing it, like, I just instantly felt... <laughs> happier you know, yeah. with the second environment that, that you were explaining <laughs> yeah so if it was just one meal you think you'd digest the pizza better and then as soon as you're done with that one meal you pop back to your regular life i think me too yeah yeah for sure yeah um yeah it's it's not just about it's not just about the food <laughs> for sure yeah. <laughs> everything is interconnected yeah um you know, you can um, you can eat as much kale or as much fruit and veggies or healthy food as you like, but if you're still in that toxic relationship, if you're still in that job that you hate, um, all those sorts of things, um, I don't think you can ever truly achieve, you know, optimal health. Yep, definitely. You know, it's 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 all one. It's all interconnected. So I'm really about trying to help people. You know, not with not just with the food. That's sort of like a gateway um, to the awakening, and, and definitely plays a huge part in optimal health. Um, but if you don't work on the other facets of your life as well, you'll plateau and you'll just stay at that certain level, and um, you won't be able to break through to that next level. And as you probably know, this so many different levels to this journey mm -hmm. to this awakening process so um and everyone gets into it into the awakening journey maybe from a different place you know maybe someone moves to a healthier diet and that helps to awaken them or they start a meditation practice or some sort of spiritual practice um but well from whatever you start with um there's always those other facets of life that you have to eventually start working on as well um to break through yeah. Let's talk about awakening because you keep using that word and it's a very, very important word. And, you know, I feel like the detox and the health and like all of that always trickles to awakening. It always like it's a triangle leading up to a spiritual awakening. You know, what is what does spiritual awakening mean for you and what did it look like for you? Spiritual awakening is is to me just waking up to the truth, I guess, to the truth of who we really are and what we're really doing here. I guess we're brought up in a society kind of makes you feel like you're in a prison, I guess, in a way, you know. We're brought up in a way to, we're programmed in a way, you know. We need to, we go to school, uh, we learn to live a certain way, to get a job, to go to university, um, to do all these steps the program could do in society, um, get a job, build up the corporate ladder. Um, we don't live in a society that nourishes, you know, our uniqueness. And and I guess for me, this journey just helped me to awaken, awaken me to the fact that there's a bigger universal intelligence going on behind all of this. You know, we're not just these little physical beings living on this little physical earth. We're not just going to die and that's the end of it. You know, there's a bigger universal intelligence going on. There's a bigger picture to everything. We're a part of something so much bigger than we could ever, ever imagine. And I don't think that us on earth will ever really understand that bigger picture um, while we're here on earth, maybe. Once we leave Earth, we'll get a better understanding of it all. Um, but just realizing that we're here to live our unique path and our unique journey and that we all have this these special gifts or this special gift inside of us to share with the rest of the world, you know. And I think it's so important to awaken to the fact that we are so powerful and that we are able to live in a way that brings us peace and joy and in a way that aligns with our highest values. And everyone talks about, you know, finding your purpose. We have to find our purpose. But I really believe that 
we don't need to find it. It's already within us. And I believe that our highest purpose is our highest value. You know, what do you, what do you love to do? What do you value so much in your life? What would you do every day for the rest of your life? Even if you didn't get paid for it, that is your purpose. That is your highest value. Um, and learning to, and I think becoming spirit, I mean, we're all spiritual beings, but I think just awakening to that spirituality and awakening to the fact that you can live a life of living with your highest value and sharing your purpose in a way that brings you such joy and peace and happiness. Um, I guess that's spirituality to me. Mm, damn, laying the truth bomb. Bit of a ramble. <laughs> no, that was big. That was big. That could have been the best. <laughs> the best minute or two of my podcast yet. Not even, not being sarcastic there. That was, that was serious truth bomb right there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm with you on every single word you said, um, especially about the purpose thing, you know, like I really feel that every single person has this gift that they're supposed to give to the universe, to the, to humanity. And it can be something so simple, but when it's done with love, it creates this ripple effect, you know, even if it's something so silly, like making a chair, but when you make that chair with so much love and so much care, it does something to the, to the world, you know, like, it's like you give your, your, give your love to the world, you give your love to humanity. And, and, you know, I, I always say every single person is the best at one thing in the world. You know, mm -hmm. every single person is better at one thing than everyone else in the world. I really, I truly believe that there are how many different things are there that are, you know, you can make, make anything, do anything, teach anything, especially with the internet. You know, there are businesses where you teach how to do something. And then there's another business that branches off that teaches people how to teach people how to do something, you know, it's, it's just when you think like that everything's done in the world, it's like something else comes out or you see someone else doing something you're like, man, that's, you know, and things just keep popping up. You're right. This, yeah. It's never ending for sure. <clears throat> Yeah. And, and, you know, awakening to me, spirituality to me, for me, awakening kind of came first before detox. For me, I started realizing that I'd been living a lie that I wasn't this logical meat body walking around earth, you know, my mind creating all of my consciousness and all of my thoughts and only what I could see or measure is real and everything else is bogus, you know, because that, that's genuinely where I was for many, many years, you know, and I started to, to step out of that paradigm and realize that I started to touch that box that's, that's, you know how people don't know what they don't know and it's this massive piece of the pie, you know, we know what we know, we know what we don't know, maybe that occupies like 5% and then the rest of the 95% is you don't know what you don't know. And yeah. I started seeing, holy shit, like I started uncovering this don't know what I don't know. And mm -hmm. wow, I've been so wrong about so many things. And the universe is massively complex. And this human body is massively complex. And it makes way more sense to believe in a divine power than it does to believe, to not believe in a divine power. Like if you actually use like true logic and go back into history and look at all of the ancient scrolls and textbooks and, you know, all of these uh, hieroglyphics and all of this stuff, all of that stuff for thousands of years has pointed in the direction, even religion, of course, has pointed in the direction of, of a higher, higher being, a divine uh, magic at play. So when you start to take, take a real step back, it's like, wow, it makes more sense to, to believe in, in this sort of stuff. And, and what I yeah. learned is that when you start really believing in this stuff, that's when you start seeing it. You know, like some people, maybe they see stuff first and then they become believers. But I feel yeah. that when you really believe in it, it's just like this whole world starts opening up to you, you know, where, where con connection is available and, and divine things happening, like synchronicities and being able to predict things and knowing who's calling and just these little things throughout the day that start presenting themselves, you know. Yeah, and it, you start picking up on them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's and, um, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, it just it um it's hard to explain, isn't it? But it just when I discovered started to discover that as well, um, and you start to awaken, I guess it just it just resonates with you, like it just feels right in your heart and in your soul. And I think 
you know, so many people these days and, and me as well, like we're living in a place of fear because, you know, honestly, so many people are fearful of, of dying because that's all we believe and that's all we know is that we're on this earth for a short period of time and then we die and that's it. And um, I don't know if this is going to mean anything to you, but it is. I, it already I, remember, is. When yeah. I, <laughs> I mm. remember when I was a little girl, I, I remember having that fear and I would always think about myself dying. That sounds terrible, but, and I would always try and like, you know, our minds are so powerful and I would always try and picture myself dying and what it would be like after dying. And I just remember I, I couldn't, like it just wasn't possible. And I would, whenever I would try, I would feel this really sort of hurtful feeling in my heart and it just, I don't know how to explain it, but it just never resonated with me. And it was like I had this deep intuitive feeling that that's not what happens. Like that just isn't, isn't right because I could never imagine it, you know. And um, now that I've awoken to the fact of, of what's real and what's true, um, that we're all energy, you know, we're, all, we're energetic beings and energy is neither created nor destroyed. It's only transferred. So, you know, when we die, that's not it, you know, our energy our heart, our soul, and our spirit is going to be transferred somewhere else. So when you realize that, it's just, it's so beautiful, you know, knowing that it's ongoing and it's not going to be the end. And maybe this is just the beginning of this beautiful journey. Mm -hmm. So it just <clears throat> helps to dissolve that, that fear that so many people, you know. Have. Yeah. Yeah, I almost, I almost did die in an ayahuasca ceremony. I, I, I felt like I touched, I touched what comes next. And man, death is, death is like the most mysterious uh, topic there is. And I, I would love to just say my piece on it. You know, death I feel is like the grand test. You know, like it is the ultimate test at the end. You know, and I feel like all of this work that we're doing now with our detox and spirituality. I think all of that prepares us to have as clean of a death as possible, you know, and I, I really feel like when people who pass on to the next world are on drugs, morphine, alcohol, um, they're drugged up in hospitals, they're kept alive for decades with cancers that are like, you know, just basically dying for 20 years as opposed to living and then a quick death, you know, um, I really feel that that actually alters the place that we go to. Um, after death, I feel like just like when we sleep, we launch into a new world. And for me, at least the, the state that I'm in when I fall asleep is very indicative of the dream, the types of dreams that I'm going to have and the type, the level of res restoration I'll get in my sleep. So I just feel like that death space to, to really like pass that test is to be in a space of like trustedness, like oneness maybe even meditating if that's possible, you know, and like launching off into that next plane. And then what I feel is that we get recycled back into the earth. This is just my opinion. You know, we get recycled yeah, and, and when we get recycled, we start off with, you know, all of the, if we cleaned our karma, we start off in like a, 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 a that, in that state, you know, and maybe it's not exactly like, you know, Josh left at, 98 he needs to get to a hundred like now he's at 98 mana points for the next lifetime you know but i but i do feel like i do feel like it's it's some sort of process where you're cleaning and unraveling your karma and then and maybe it doesn't even have to be karma it could just be multi-generational pain you know like or your soul's pain and then you come back and if you didn't catch any of the lessons you get put into the same exact situation you know and I even feel like we choose our families. Like I feel like we choose our family. And I haven't really talked about this type of stuff on my YouTube channel yet, but fuck it, I'm going into it. Let's do so, it. <laughs> yeah, this, it just feels right right now. So, yeah. Um, you know, I've heard that as well. I've heard that we really do, um, we, we do choose, we, we do choose a lot when we come back to this life. Yeah, I've heard that as well. So mm -hmm. that resonates with me. Yeah. Yeah. If you, for me, yeah, go ahead. Um, yeah, so you're saying, I'm kind of just like sort of picturing a, a washing machine, so we're just going around and around in cycles. So yeah, like it, 
our, this life is sort of like a preparation for when we die and for how we come back. Or I think it's just like a game with different levels, you know, and like the, the, the goal is for, I guess the goal would be, the thing is, is not really a goal because everybody has a different timeline and a different, a different like uh, role, you know, like the, the gar the man who's taking out the garbage, we don't want him to be resentful about taking out the garbage, right? That doesn't mean that he's worse or not as good or not as en like, not as enlightened as someone else. Right. So like, there's different timelines, there's different roles, just like there's different animals in nature with different functions. I feel like every soul has like a little different function that they're doing on the planet and they have their own little timeline. Does that make sense? Yeah. <laughs> it's a little out there, but yeah. <laughs> no, well, um, yeah, this is resonating with me. I, um, I don't know if you believe in, in psychics or any of that sort of stuff, yeah. but um, during a water extended water fast I did a few years ago, um, we worked with a psychic and she was amazing and yeah, it just resonates with me what you were saying because she is into all this sort of stuff and she was reading my past lives and um, she was saying she could always see that I was, I always seemed to get end up being stuck in this toxic romantic relationship where I was almost, this partner was almost um, suppressing, suppressing me and kind of she, she used the word drugging me. Um, to keep me suppressed and keep my uniqueness suppressed. And that resonated with me because as I told you, my mom, my romantic relationship was, was all about the drugs. Um, so that was really interesting. And she said to me that this life that I'm in now is the first time that I've ever broken out of that, that phase in that relationship for mm -hmm. the first time ever. Um, so yeah, that really resonates with me, what you were saying. So um, yeah, for the first time I've, I've come back to earth maybe and I've finally broken out of it and I'm, I'm getting to that next level, which which is kind of what it feels like. So yeah, it's interesting. And I feel like you probably, and just in my perspective, I feel like you wouldn't have to do that, you know, next time you came here. You wouldn't yeah, have to yeah. do that same, you wouldn't have to learn that same lesson. There'll be more lessons, you know, and more hardships, but maybe not. Yeah. 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 So you you sort of in your Ayurveda experience you sort of died and then came back to life. Well, some people have like near some people have like an ayahuasca trip where they see death, you know, and they hallucinate or they they're they're being the the, the 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 ayahuasca brings them to their death in a very safe yet very scary way, you know, like where where their ego maybe dies. Mine was super different. I was basically fasting, dieting like crazy, drinking ayahuasca, doing yoga, meditating like, like super, super intensely at this point for two and a half years. And I was in my dieta, isolated in the Amazon. And I was like emaciated, like 150 pounds, doing a lot of fasting, on it, doing an apprenticeship with shamans, um, and, uh, had severe mercury poisoning and all I was eating was fish and plantains. So more mercury was coming into my body when I did eat a lot of time I was fasting and I was drinking ayahuasca three or four times a week. It was, it was like as intense as like, I was literally being electrocuted by the universe with how much stuff was going on. And yeah. I was in a ceremony and I drank a cup of medicine and I didn't feel anything. And for the first time in 25 ayahuasca ceremonies, I said, I'm going to drink another cup of medicine because historically I always trusted. I said, okay, I'm going to take this one cup. If I don't have an experience, then my experience is a lack of experience, you know, like that's, and I took a second cup and 20 minutes later, I started purging violently on both from both ends, violently, violently purging for like 40, 50 minutes. And it got to a point where like, I was like literally crawling back into the Maloka and I said like, ayudame, ayudame to the shamans. I was like, 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 the, and, and it's funny because everyone in the room was laughing, right? Everyone in the room was laughing because like, that's ayahuasca, like you're, you're purged, oh, okay. you know? But they didn't understand, the, the people there at the center did not understand how much pain I was in, you know? Only the shamans did. And as soon as I said ayudame, they came over to me and they were like literally fanning, like fanning spirits away from me. 
like and, and it, in my in my consciousness i genuinely felt like like the grim reaper was there to take me like i felt some type of presence that was like getting ready for me my life was like about to end yeah. and they were fanning these spirits away and like like saying telling me to tranquilo tranquilo calm down calm down and eventually i got to this point where i gave up i said i'm done with this suffering i can't do this anymore and i actually left my body and i was like my body was convulsing on the ground but i wasn't in it and i was like above it and the shamans were communicating with me like get back in your fucking body you know they were like really? yeah, like they they were i don't know exactly what words they were using because like they were talking yeah. maybe shapibo but and i was just like like no i'm done i'm done and <laughs> I'm at, at one point i even remember one of the shamans like one of the shamans even said like i think he said like is he gone i, th I think he's gone some mm -hmm. he's he, i don't remember the words he used but i remember his demeanor was like he gave up on me one of the shamans gave up on me the other shaman who was a woman who i was very connected to she did not give up on me and she just like pushed her like her boyfriend aside and was like no and eventually i came back into my body and like i, I mean i survived obviously but to what me made you come back into your body? say it again what made you come back into your body I basically, at the very last second, when I was just, I was every 99% of me gave up on this life and this suffering that I was going through. I just said, I, I just don't even remember the words I used in my mind, but I just said, or I just felt, I can't, I can't give up. I felt like I would give up on humanity. Mm -hmm. I felt like it wasn't. And I also knew, I, I, I fucking knew that I would have to do it again. Like, for I was that. just thinking that yeah. what you did. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, I just felt like I would have to do it again, you know? And the forces in the room, the forces in the room that were occupying the room at that time, the dark forces, I felt them. I tasted them. I wanted nothing to, like, I felt like I was going with them. If I left, oh. they were taking me somewhere. And I wanted nothing to do with them. Nothing to do with them. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Why, why would you have to go with the dark forces? See, yeah, this might get into a tricky subject, but, you know, I feel like, I feel like when we, I don't feel like it's just this bliss and this, this light of Jesus or God when we die, no matter what oh, our life is it. like. Yeah. I really don't feel that way. That's not what I, I, I feel like we go exactly to what we're connected to, you know, and, 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 you know, we go exactly to the, yeah, it's hard for me to talk about this publicly, but yeah. 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 yeah no, no, that makes sense. I've done, I, you know, I've had some friends that have done Arushka and DMT and those sorts of things. And I don't know if it's sort of the same thing, but what you're saying resonates in the way that the experience that you have and where you go is exactly in relation to what's going on inside and, and your spiritual and emotional level and levels and those sorts of things. So, yeah, that definitely makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Here's what I'll say one more thing, maybe to clear things up a little bit. And again, this is just my perspective, but I feel like we, I feel like if we can learn how to navigate the spiritual world as a human, then when we pass, we actually are able to navigate as a soul. It's like you have to learn, it's almost like you have to learn how to travel in those worlds. And then when you mm -hmm. pass, you're able to travel. Whereas I feel like if you don't learn to navigate, you get confused and swept up by forces that may not have total integrity. You know, like mm -hmm. I, I, I don't, I don't feel like all spirituality is divine or, or sorry. I don't feel like all spirituality is light. I feel there, there, there's there's light and there's dark forces, and I don't feel like any spiritual experience is an, is a like good experience because it's spiritual. You know, like I feel mm -hmm. like from my experience with ayahuasca is that I could plug into these dark forces, and yeah, it was a super spiritual experience, but it didn't give me any growth or any any more light in my body or any more peace. You know, so there's that makes sense. There's yeah. always that balance in every single thing in life there's always the good and the bad 
the light and the dark. So why would it be any, any different with the spiritual, I guess? It yeah. makes so much sense. Yeah. And I think, yeah, it resonates with what, what you're saying resonates because, yeah, it sounds like is this sort of a test and a game and kind of learning to navigate. And if we don't, it's sort of like you're saying we get lost mm -hmm. afterwards and the dark spirits can sort of, um, yeah, Wow, we, we got into intense space pretty quickly. <laughs> you, you must be able to hold it because I, I wouldn't be talking about it if you weren't able to hold it, you know? Oh, that's yeah. a good thing then, I guess. Yeah. But, you know, that um, that concept of that equal balance, equal and opposite balance in everything that we do and everything that we feel and everything in life, um, that's played a really big part in my emotional and spiritual healing journey. Um, I don't know if you know much about Martini, Dr. John. Yeah, I do. I have heard of him. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what he teaches and, and he helps people to get, um, to get over like past traumas and, and those sorts of things. Um, that's what he mainly does through his Martini method, which is all about helping people to see and to realize that, um, every single thing has an equal and opposite, uh, balance. So like a, Past trauma, for example, um, we hold on to these past traumas um, and we store that emotional baggage, negativity um, in ourselves, which then can um, ripple over and create, you know, disease and health symptoms and all those all sorts of things, depression, anxiety. Um, and the main reason that we that people store those negative emotions from past traumas is because we're so caught up with seeing that situation or past trauma as a negative situation so that's that's how we're seeing that situation um but he helps people to realize that that situation has a perfect equal and opposite equal equal and opposite benefits as well like it's it's not just negative but it's also positive as well and so when you learn to awaken to the awaken to the fact that everything that happens to you in life has that equal and opposite balance I don't know, that was a kind of a big revelation to me. Um, like I had some uh, past traumas that I was holding on to and what you do is you sit down and you write down all the negative attachments you had to that situation and then the hard part, you go and you write down all of the benefits that came out of that situation and it's super difficult because you're so caught up in all the negative but there are those equal and opposite positives. And when you actually write all those positives down in regard to a negative situation, you're able to then finally dissolve all of that emotional stored up negativity and release that. And um, yeah, so I've done a lot of work with that and I think that's an important concept. Very important. To realize. Sorry, keep going. <laughs> no, I'm done. Okay. Totally, totally with you on that. Jo Dr. John Demartini, that's his name? Yeah, yeah, okay. he does the, the Demartini method. Okay. So it's just helping people to bring yourself back down to reality and see a re realistic point of view on, on everything that happens in life, that it's, that it's not one-sided, it mm -hmm. never is. You know? yeah. And so for me, a big thing was my health issues. Like I always saw my health journey and my health issues and my sicknesses as this awful thing um, but now that I've really worked on releasing all of that emotional sort of energy with my health situation I've realized that so much beautiful positivity and benefits have come out of it and and yeah it's just amazing to finally see that yeah totally and then you get to have a massive medicine or a massive gift for the planet once you go through that you can't it's, it's literally, I feel like it's impossible to truly have a, a, a gift, like to learning through textbooks, you know, like I feel the best practitioners in the world, whether or not they're qualified with a medical degree are simply the ones who have gone through personal experience, you know, um, in all facets, in all, in all categories of life, not just health. So I feel like by going through that, you literally change humanity by a figuring out your own health, you know, mm. you change and I think humanity. And people are really, yeah, waking up to that. Mm -hmm. You know, people aren't really looking for help or guidance from 
people who have got all the letters and numbers behind their names and all that sort of thing. They're looking for people who have had that personal experience because what's better than that? You yeah. know, someone that's that's walked the path already, you know, yeah. can't get any better than that. Definitely. All right, I want to ask you one last thing. It might be a long subject, so. <laughs> um, all right, so there was some... And if you don't want to talk about it, that's cool too. But I'm I'm not, I'm totally on your side with this. There was some uh, media publicity as far as a post that you made, right? You said cancer cancer is not a disease; it is your body uh, telling you. To, so let, let's talk about that if you want to. If you want to talk about, I would love to hear what happened in your own words and 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 i'm gonna support you 100 percent because i know i know i know the story but this is for the audience yeah sure yeah. yeah no worries yeah i haven't spoken about it since then because the people that have come to talk to me about it don't have my best interests at heart but right, i know right. you do so that's yeah. fine um but yeah the, the end of last year um so something i love to do is is write inspiring articles about things that i have experienced or believe in and, and share that with the world and yeah, I wrote an article about cancer, um, but the basic concept of it was that I was sharing my beliefs about the fact that our bodies are always, you know, they are a self-healing mechanism and they're always working for us and not against us. I don't believe our bodies ever want us to die. Um, and that's the same in regards to when someone has cancer, I believe that cancer uh, is a symptom of an underlying issue, um, generally a toxicity issue. And so I believe that cancer is a sign that your body is trying to communicate with you that something is wrong and that it's asking you to please change something so that it can start to heal or start the healing process. Uh, so I shared this belief of mine. And yeah, basically, I mean, I totally understand. It's a very, very a touchy subject because cancer is such a big epidemic. Um, one in two people have it these days and so many people have lost their loved ones to cancer, including myself. Um, so I think people, it was a very confronting concept for people to hear and read about. So, you know, you had those people that really reacted to that article that I shared and got really defensive. Uh, and then there were the other people who actually took it in and really read it and, and understood it and thought, well, maybe there's some truth behind this. I think it's one, it's not some truth. It's 100% the truth, you know, <laughs> like there's no, there's no doubt about it. You know, um, yeah. our bodies are on our side. Everything wants to live in nature, you know, and I feel like I've worked with some serious badass doctors around the world, you know, collaborating on detox projects. I almost uh, had a, almost worked on this center in Thailand, uh, but it fell apart. But anyway, the point is that I've, I've worked with some serious doctors, like doctors who, who have been kicked out of the country for curing cancer, doctors who, you know, like really know their shit from a medical standpoint and a science standpoint. And the universal message that I was taught by them, and which I intuitively thought as well, was that cancers, for the most part, are like a conglomeration of toxins. When the body can't release toxins, the body will like put it all together in this like giant formation of, of a tumor. Obviously there's different types of tumors and there's different ways of it happening, but I completely agree that cancer is just a way of a, a signal that the body's that the body's giving to us, you know? Um, and I don't, yeah, go ahead. No, no. Yeah, I was just going to say, yeah. yeah, I call it like the garbage bin, you know, chin is just like yeah. a garbage bin, you know, and the body makes me kind of sad, but yeah, the yeah. body is working so hard for us to take all those toxins and then try and save us and put it in this garbage bin so that it doesn't leak, those toxins don't leak out into our mm -hmm. blood and kill us, you know, that's, that's yep. the main reason that it creates those chins. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah, so I saw, yeah, man, I... I wish uh, it's a tough position for you to be in, you know, like to, cause there's this backlash that happens. Um, I wonder what would have happened if you were just like, 
I stand true to my word. You know what I mean? Like, like, like when after all the backlash came and you just made a YouTube video and instead of an apology, you were just like, I'm Olivia Budgen and I stand true to my word. <laughs> yeah, it was tricky. I, I, I've never been in a situation like that before. And yeah. I was like, hmm, how am I going to respond to this? Yeah. So I just tried to do it in the most professional. I'd sort of, yeah, of course I could have prodded it even more, but I thought, you know, uh, it was a pretty emotional journey for I'm me sure. already, so I'm I thought sure. I'm just gonna, you know, I'm gonna stand my ground. And, and I didn't say that. I, I never said that I took back my beliefs right. or anything like that, which I think is important. Um, but yeah, I just tried to. Uh, I just apologized for if people took it the wrong way and, and sort of stepped back and took a bit of a break from social media to let it to let it calm down. But um, yeah. yeah, such a super sensitive subject. I'm, I'm sure. even still getting some backlash um, and it's really taken a toll on my businesses but at the same time um, it's also helped me to it was also a really good learning experience I've definitely learned to learn how to maybe word things a little better and come across as maybe a bit more sensitive and, and those sorts of things um, so yeah it was a good learning experience but I definitely stand my ground in what I believe yeah. in and don't take anything back about yeah. what I said yeah. Andreas Moritz, for anyone in the audience, that's the book that you were referring to in your post. And the name of the book is Cancer is Not a Disease. Uh, yeah. What's the, the subtitle of that book? Cancer is Not a Disease. It's your body trying to save you, right? Yeah, that's it. Okay. Yeah, and if anyone right. is interested in, in a serious badass in the world of health, YouTube Andreas Moritz, he passed away, unfortunately, but his YouTube channel is still available. And it's he beams with light and like he, he feels like an alien to me honestly <laughs> yeah. yeah so i think he was an alien on a mission yeah. yeah yeah it's such a touchy like it's such a controversial subject but like you know i always think is there really anything any such thing as a disease like there's just yeah. all these different labels that we're given and I think it's just our poor bodies trying to communicate with us in, in all these different ways, depending on the person's unique situation. So, yeah, it's just about delving in and listening to your body. And because um, our body is energy and it's, it's, it's talking to us and it's communicating with us and we can communicate back with it. And it's just about trying to find that balance and learn, learning to live with our body and not against it, you know. Um, learning to live with the laws of nature and when yes. you learn to live with the laws of nature there's this beautiful balance that happens and you know health is you know optimal health just becomes that natural side effect of that yep yeah. i i feel like cancer arises when someone's not living in balance with the laws of nature because in tribal cultures they didn't even have a word for cancer they didn't it wasn't even a thing you know like a lot of cultures that lived in accordance with the law with with nature with plants and animals and the divine you know cancer was like maybe maybe like a point like once in a one in a million thing you know it wasn't like this thing that that 20 or 30% of the population would, would deal with throughout their lifetime, you know? So to me, that just feels like, it feels like we have, and again, all, this is all our opinion, right? So it's like, it's really the truth, but it's my opinion. <laughs> but, yeah. but, but, uh, you know, like I feel, I feel like, you know, when you're, when you're in a common society and common culture that we live in today, it's so loud. There's so many things that are loud and noisy and distracting that we don't have a chance to actually um, listen to the signals that our body are giving that our bodies are giving us. So I feel like cancer is basically this end of the line thing that happens where there's hundreds of decisions that are made up until that point, hundreds of emotional uh, faulty coping mechanisms, hundreds of poor eating, you know, poor eating, poor um, you know, like uh, coping mechanisms, people's responses to stress, you know, check out the body, when the body says no by Gabor Mate for anyone in the audience. And, and, you know, I feel like there's so many things that go wrong before the cancer, you know, and if we're able yeah. to live in accordance with nature, we can catch all of those things in action. And it doesn't have to spiral out of control to, to cancer. We don't just suddenly catch cancer yeah. or, you know, I love yeah. that saying, 
oh, I've, I've caught a cold, you know. Yeah. I just can't. Yeah. It's like, yeah, you're right. There's a build up of things that happen, and there's an, that accumulation of toxicity that occurs from certain decisions that we've made. And usually, especially cancer, it's over many, 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 many years. Like, it's such a long build up process. So, yeah. I think you're exactly right for sure. Excellent. Well, that was a absolute pleasure. Where can people find you? Hmm, well, I've got my uh, health and wellness website, liviabudgeon.com. My YouTube channel, Olivia Budgeon. Instagram, Olivia Budgeon. Um, there's always one thing that I miss out on. But I think those are the main ones. I'll yeah. have links to all three of those. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Josh. Yeah, this was really amazing. Actually, I know I talked a lot. I usually don't talk this much, but uh, I like you brought you brought it out. You know, you brought it out. Like you brought out the best of me. So I, I'm, I'm usually way more reserved and like not talking about these deep spiritual topics. But fuck yeah, you brought it out. <laughs> well, it yeah. was amazing. So thank you for bringing that out as well. All righty, peace, Olivia Budgeon. Well, actually, we'll keep the Skype going. I'm just going to end okay. the uh, <laughs> peace, <laughs> audience. <laughs> Bye, guys. <Yeah. laughs>